Don't need those anymore. Verdict's in. Don't waste your time on those just replacing the drum and the blade in the drum unit because what I found out is inside there there's a brush and a wax bar that lubricate the drum and they don't get replaced so we really only replaced half of the wearable items which doesn't make sense but I just swapped these out and put OEM drums in for yellow and cyan and we should be good to go. Yeah, so on Friday, this uh, Perfect Binder started smoking. It's such a bad habit to start. This uh, solenoid right here burned up. So I uh, quick hopped on the phone and ordered a new solenoid. So when you're taking this apart here, you don't have to worry about taking any bolts out on this side because it's mounted on a round shaft. So you just need to take out three bolts on this side and then you can rotate it up to get the solenoid there underneath. Okay, so I had to easy out those uh, these two screws here. I was working on them for a while and I just would not grab, so drilled it out, backed them right out, went out real easy and thankful for that. Uh, but just for fun, wanted to test the old solenoid here to see what the resistance on the coil is. Okay, I got a 4.1, and here's a new one. Six point six. So that kind of makes sense. This one's probably burned up. And I feel relatively confident this is going to solve my problem. So the last thing I got to do, take this pin out and put it in the new one and head to the hardware store and get some new screws here. Well, that took longer than expected. Uh, I got two new screws for down here. And the uh, camera died while I was driving this pin out. Got that all back together. So I just need to put three screws in up top here. Stretch this spring across. Hook up the electrical connection. And three screws on the bottom and side here. And then uh, we should be good to go. Okay, this thing made a fool out of me. Turns out I don't think it was the solenoid. However, the solenoid was out of adjustment. Okay, here I am day two. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I'm just about ready to call a professional because uh, you need to throw in the towel at a certain point. Um, but just because I can't put my finger on what's malfunctioning and I don't know if it's something software or hardware. I'm trying to find a relay because there was a burning smell and it's almost as if uh, a relay is not, if it's a solid state relay, it's malfunctioning because my voltage change is just like a, a tenth of a volt. 
I need to I need to dive deeper into a schematic. I'm gonna give myself one hour. If I can't find something promising in an hour, I'm gonna make a phone call. And let the pros deal with it. Now well, we got some stuff printing here. Printed a bunch of covers here to laminate. Guts of three different books, four, five covers. What I say, when it rains it pours. Everything gets approved at once, that's okay. And it's all backing up though, that's not okay. Shame on me though, because I replaced that part before I tested anything. I just saw, it. well that part was smoking, that's bad, I need to get a new one. So I ordered that, replaced it. You gotta confirm when a part fails, and I neglect to do that all the time. I uh, made a mistake. Okay, so generally if I can't figure out what's wrong in one day, like what's happening now, I call a professional and get the pros to either tell me over the phone what needs to be done or come out and show me what needs to be done. Uh, so I did that. I made the phone call. Uh, he's going to come out tomorrow. And uh, he confirmed my suspicion. So that solenoid operates. It'll open and close. Um, if I undo this interlock. So power gets to the solenoid. It needs to be powered to open. It needs... Uh, 24 volts and it gets that it receives the power but when it's supposed to close down on the cover it's not closing it'll kind of hesitate the voltage gets a little bit lower but it doesn't snap down on the cover like it should uh, so I was thinking okay there's a relay in here somewhere that is malfunctioning and that relay is not cutting that 12 volts uh, when it's supposed to be. And uh, the reason I was thinking that is I measured the voltage between the uh, this module right here. Right here is the module that controls that solenoid. And there's a light on here that'll turn on when I tell that solenoid to close, but the solenoid doesn't close and the voltage does not stop. So to me, there's a relay in here somewhere. And I looked, I checked all the relays in the back, I looked at the schematic and I could not find the relay. And I mean, it's acting like the uh, solid state relay that I replaced. There's a solid state relay back in that I replaced for the, the glue pot and uh, it's acting the same way. So I just talked on the phone and he'll be out here tomorrow, but he confirmed that it is likely the relay and there is a relay located on this module and that's probably what burned up. And that makes sense because I smelled the smell of defeated electronics and uh, that makes that makes me think that there's a there's some sort of a solid state relay in here that I should be able to desolder off there and replace uh, instead of changing that whole module or buying that whole module which I have no idea what it costs uh, if it comes to that you know we'll have to do that but so before he comes tomorrow I just want to I just want to pull that module out and see if I can't find the part because I can pretty much guarantee from what I smelled there is a, bar a burned up component on there and it should be obvious uh, once we get it open. And I'm curious, I, now that he said that that's probably what it is, I, I gotta see, I really gotta see. So before I unhooked all these, I took pictures, but somebody else has been in here at some point because these are all labeled uh, as to where they plug in. So, almost there, I just gotta take these two out. It's really cool how these things all just connect together.
no obvious charring yet. Oh yeah. Something definitely burned up in there. Nothing is dramatically burned up, but uh, this connector here might be cooked. Okay, one, two, three, four. The fifth pin over is the cover clamp nipping solenoid, and that's the that's what's not working. So this right here might be that one's really off color compared to the other ones, but it usually usually it completely burns up. And now I need to look up if I can get a new transistor. And I also need to, to re-remember how to test this. Because I always forget, because I don't do this every day. Yeah, if you look closely, this is the bottom side. And this is discolored compared to the ones around it here. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test the continuity. Uh, and compare one MOSFET to the next one and see if I can uh, get some differences to, that would render this thing to be shot. Yep. That's bad. I'm no professional by any means. But, so here's a good transistor. And there shouldn't be continuity between two of those legs. But this one has continuity between all of them. See that? So this thing shot. It's no big deal, I can desolder that out of there. I just got to track down that part now. So I just hopped on Mouser Electronics. Uh, those little little guys are 264 a piece. So I got four of them headed my way. I got extras just in case I like to... When you have a part that cheap, I just get a couple of them. Now is the time where it's nice to have stuff laying around. Because I got some transistors on here I might be able to take off. But I need, I don't know if they would be interchangeable. The parts are going to be here in two days, so I, c I can wait. Um, but, and also, uh, the technician's going to be here tomorrow, and he's bringing uh, a board along. And I don't know if he'll let me use it for a couple days, or uh, if I have to buy that one. But, either way, we should be up and running probably tomorrow. So that'll be good because I got a lot of books to bind right now, but that's fine. I have a whole bunch of saddle stitch stuff to work on too, so uh, it's not detrimental. But man, I'm getting too old for this kind of stuff. I just, whenever anything like this happens, I just go to worst case scenario and like, oh, I need to get a new machine or something, but no, it's. It's a $2 part that needs to be replaced. Uh, so I got to remind myself to take a deep breath and just calm down and, uh, you know, just think about it. So anyways, I'll bring you back in a little bit, uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, so I didn't get any of this on film because the service guy was here and I didn't feel like filming. Um, but he gave me a junk 
uh, module that he thought he fixed, but he had put a jumper in here, but he jumped to a bad component, the same bad component that failed on mine, but there's a bunch of other good ones on here, so I, I plucked one of these MOSFETs out and replaced it in my board. And so far, what I can tell from testing it, it works. So I'm going to throw it back in there and we should be good to go. I'm not 100% on my soldering ability though because that is a super tiny part and the one leg is just a little short, but it tests good. I test the continuity of it. It should work. So I'm going to put it back together and uh, keep the fingers crossed. That's a beautiful thing. So let's quit messing around, buying some books. So, a couple times I wanted to give up working on this as I did not know what to do, but pushed through. I needed some help of some professional technicians that uh, dropped off some parts for me, but this is stuff that you guys can do. Just remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Catch you later. So remember, don't do what I did. Just because you see one component smoking doesn't mean that's the component that failed. It could very well be something else. So remember to test before you buy a replacement component. Because it, this explains why this solenoid over here was so hot. It was burning me. And uh, because it always had power because that MOSFET failed, so it always sent power to it and it was overheating. That's why it was smoking. This is the way it's supposed to be, uh, relaxed with the, the cover clamped down, so there's no power going to that solenoid, so it's going to stay cool now. So it all makes sense. So make sure you test before you buy and don't pull a Dan.